Yeah, wait until I'm done. Wait until the screen's done talking, and then and then we'll play. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So tonight in this special live stream, we are going to be making some chain. So we'll be doing a forge welding demonstration on chain. I really hope you all enjoy it. So come on in, sit right down. This stream will go for about, well, however long it takes to make a link of three together at least. That is my goal for this evening. Usually we stream from about 7 to 9 p.m. So if you're watching this on the replay, you can watch that at a 2x speed or something of that nature. And then, uh, yeah, pretty much. So we're going to get started on this whole thing pretty quickly. And then we'll be taking some questions and super chats and things like that. But basically what we're starting with is a piece of half inch or 12 mil round bar. Uh, that is approximately eight inches long and you'll have to forgive me. I didn't do the math prior hand uh, I Believe that's 400 mil. I'm not sure The length here eight inches you can comment down in the comment section uh, if you will on that what type of uh, Millimeter that is in metric but Basically, we're gonna heat this up. We're gonna get this heated first and foremost and while I do that We'll go ahead and take some questions as it is heating. All right, while you're waiting for that to heat, let's yep. welcome a few people in here. Uh, Paul Ellis, hello. Paul Ellis, good to have you here. Champ Ironworks, that's Roy, taking the shirt. Hey, glad you like Champ Ironworks. I haven't worn this shirt in quite some time. Rigid Ironworks says hello, Jessica and Roy. Hello, Rigid Ironworks, good to have you in the house. Hello, Ben Hobart. Uh, Mark S says, darn, I missed the three at three. <laughs> well, it's up. You can always go and watch it. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah, got lots of uh, people that like the shirt, so pretty cool. Yeah, cool. Glad everybody's liking the shirt. So. Yeah, Graham said 200 millimeter. 200 millimeter. Yeah, you see, I got it all wrong. I would have had people having a really big link. <laughs> All right, so while this heats up, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know about some really neat stuff that's, uh, that we are unveiling for anybody who's watching this on the replay as well. That way we get it out up front here. Right directly after this live stream is over, we will be releasing a video. And it is our welcome to our new studio video. That's not a new workshop. No, we have not changed addresses, but we do have... A uh, new studio set that we built very specifically for the three at threes. And a new series that we are actually launching of live streams. So we are going to be doing a Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time business live stream. And it's going to be focused around helping you guys out there and gals and pretty much any entrepreneur help them build their business. So... That'll be things like critiquing and some stuff like that for Super Chats. And we're pretty excited about this. We really hope that it'll uh, really bless a lot of you guys out there that are trying to do this as a blacksmithing business. Uh, out of all the comments we get, we probably get a good two or three hundred of them a month that are related to business questions yeah, as a whole easily. And we want to provide an outlet and add extra value to you all out there uh, mm -hmm. for that. So, so be on the lookout for that video right after this live stream is over. Yep. Uh, it'll release right about 9 p.m. this yep. evening. Yep. So, yep. So we got this hot. I'm going to hold your questions and comments unless Jessica wants to comment to them here in a second. But I'm gonna, before we do that, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to use. So I'm going to use this very simple bending fork to bend the actual u-shape that we're custom looking at like this so we're going to bend that bar into a u-shape and that will be the start of our chain link so if you want to move the camera angle all right so 
good and hot, right in the center of the bar where we need it. Also, hopefully the feed's going well. Uh, we were still having some of the crackling issues, so uh, we'll have to get some better advice on what that is and why and all that good stuff later on. But we'll get this bar bent, so. Alright, I'll go in, make sure I pick about halfway, mm -hmm. then take a second bite, just a little bit off center of that, and again, a third bite. And that should get me pretty darn close. Stick whichever one's the taller leg straight up and adjust it. This really won't matter too much right now at this point. Uh, basically speaking, you're going to end up getting this thing all wonkified anyhow once you start bending it. So once you start bending the two ends together. So just close to a U as you can get it. Don't worry about scale and all that right now. None of that's going to matter here in a minute. So we'll just flip it around then and hold it down by the shackle now. And now we'll cross these in front of each other. Yep. There was a question about what type of flux you use. The type of flux that I'm using is a 20 mule team borax. It's just basic laundry detergent that you can get at the local grocery store. And if you look for it at like a Walmart or something like that, they usually have it in the laundry detergent aisle, but it's on the very top shelf, usually. It'll be way up high or it'll be like way in the bottom shelf. So, all right, questions, honey, comments? All right, yes. Things um, of that nature. Yes, I may. No. Uh, Thomas B. Evening, Roy, Jess, and all. Hello, hello. Let's see here. Um, Mark S. Was watching late. Switched to watch live. <laughs> For the honor sports, we can tell you haven't worn the shirt in a while because it's clean. Yeah, exactly. That's what you think. It's black, so you can't tell. Hello, hello. What else we got, honey? Any um, questions, comments? Uh, no, no questions yet. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, just a lot of comments about the audio. It's, it's a little bit choppy. Okay. We apologize for that. Is the audio lagging or is it just crackling? Okay. Uh, from my end here, it looks like it's on. On point. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Arcane Development says, Hey, Roy, I got the heavy fabrication and blacksmithing apprenticeship going to my first show next weekend. Awesome. Arcane Development. Congratulations. Congratulations. Proud of you. We're ready to go. So now we're going to take and work on the scarves. I'm going to show you here in the tongs. You can bring it up close, honey. Okay. I've already prepared a few links for forge welding tonight. This is the rough shape we're going for here. So we're going to see that okay? Yep. And we're going to be about right here on this corner. Okay. So we're trying to create a half lap like that and the tong lapped over here. We want this joint to lap like so. That's our scarf joint. So we're going to pull down our scarves on this corner of the anvil here. We'll set this off the side, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right. We're going to set it on the diagonal, and go ahead and give it a good hit. And it doesn't like to do this, so you're going to have to give it a little bit of persuasion to stay in the spot. Then we're going to flip. So from here, 
we go a full 180 degrees and we do the same on this side. Try to hold about the same angle. Then what we're going to do is we're going to reheat this up and then we'll cross them over. If I wasn't trying to demonstrate what I was doing here, I could have done that all in one heat, but we're just trying to take and demonstrate it. So, so we will go ahead, reheat these up, and then bend them over into place. chain makers tongs. You can call them about all three. They're pretty handy form. Uh, some people would consider this like a, a form of pickup tongs, but they're not really. Uh, and basically that allows me to hold the round stock straight on like this and hold inside the link in the loop. Now you can make these a bunch of different ways. This just happens to be the way that I make them. And I've also got a video coming out here very soon of them being like this, where they're at a 90 degree angle from the reins. And so this way you can grip once you got a whole bunch of these links on here and it stays free and clear of the jaws then. So this way you can connect or join the actual individual lengths of chain. And it has the added benefit of instead of having to hold all this weight and grip it of an integral tongue clip on it. So then all you have to do is hold it like that and then you can get your welding done. So that's what type of style tongs I'm using. I don't know if there are anybody's particular style they use or my own. But that's what type. Questions, Jeff? All right. Uh, Michael, what's going on? Sure. Michael Clark says, hi from Australia. Enjoying the stream. Hi, Michael Clark. Glad you're enjoying the stream. Oh. Ben Toombs says I made it. Awesome, Ben Toombs. Glad to have you here. Glad to have you. Thomas D. had just commented, no, Ben, he must have been kidnapped just before he said hi. <laughs> yeah, last time I heard, he, he likes to follow vans that have candy in them. For anybody who doesn't get that meaning, that's an inside joke from Tim at Big Dog Forge's channel on his live streams. <laughs> Green tape on the handles and some of my hammers and stuff is an identifier for when I teach classes and workshops. Uh, the green tape I put on my main smithing hammer just now is because I noticed a crack starting to form in the actual handle. So instead of having that blow apart on me, I taped it up to help save the life until I can throw a new handle in it. just a bit. Just tap them down together. 
to where we take out any sort of gap between them to where they're properly fitted. Just like so. And if you notice, they come to a bit of an apex. And that's what we're wanting. Because when we drive the material, when we make our weld on the flat, and then come to the horn, we want to be able to drive that material back into the link to dress out the joint. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's all set up, good to go. And we'll go ahead and forge weld this one up so you guys can see that. And then we'll just continue making links from here on out. So I'm gonna put a light coating of flux on here. Very light coating. You do not need a bunch. That's enough flux for any link, any one link you're gonna do. So you can see how it kind of caramelizes on there and kind of wicks down into the joint. Doing good, Scott. Glad you're here. Even if you are late. We won't hold that against you. Dustin Dixon says, finally got my anvil built from the ground up and we'll have my forge running by next Friday. Awesome. it is just an aluminum bread pan uh, and I don't I don't even attempt to keep dirt and junk out of it I just leave it in it uh, most of that don't stick it's the borax or the boric acid will flux over the steel and the rest of the junk kind of just falls off so it doesn't really stick with it so it's a good way of doing it Any questions? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, we don't have any yet. Okay, no questions, comments, or anything? Nope. Did you no? Okay. Yeah, I want to take and thank everybody. Uh, actually, let me do that after this forge well, okay? okay. Right. We're almost there, so I've got time for one comment or one question here before this is there. Okay. And because um, it's almost there. Guy Perry says, Big I think it's nice. Smiley face. <laughs> Glad you made it, Guy Perry. Hey, Billy Strong, what is the temperature you weld at? Oh, uh, that can be debatable. Um, for most people, mild steel, mild steel wells right around 1900, 1980 degrees, somewhere in there. Uh, that real low 2000 number, it will. Rod iron will weld a lot hotter than that, right around that 2300 degrees or so. And we're about ready for this weld, Jess. So we need to go ahead. You don't have to get in real close, so I'm going to be using here and here. So just as long as that's in focus. You good? Right. Yep. And that way we don't get weld sputter on there. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I got the end of the link up to temp. Now time to go ahead and weld it in here. So I'm grabbing the link at a bit of a sidewards angle. That's so I don't have to reach my wrist, wrist down too far. I'm going to pull it out here. And as long as it's still smoking, well, that opened up on me. That didn't do very good at all, did it? Uh -huh. All right. Wait for a re redo? Yep, it was almost there. 
But don't play around with that too much. Just get it back in the fire. If it doesn't weld. Took too long talking about it. Not long enough welding it. Yep. Settled for a like, but hey, we'll take your money. Huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Instead. Uh, Joshua Precarium says, nice shirt. Did you buy it or did your wife make it? Uh, I bought it. Yeah, actually in Manitou Springs at the Mountain Man shop down there. When we went down to visit my folks two years ago. Yep. Us girls were having a tea party and Roy took our son and they, they went walking around. We're good and hot, so we're going to be right here. Okay. That's fine. You good? Yep. All right. is about pointless at this point. That length welded, but we'll get it going. We'll take one more weld on that. Just because it was being particular before. How did it look like it did that time? It welded. It yeah. welded in. So, but we'll see how it does once you shape the length. Right. That's the test for this kind of weld. Uh, you can test how good your welding is on links by putting a bar in them and twisting them after it's done. And if you can pretzel twist it and it still uh, hold together you know, and not open up, you know you've got a good weld. That's usually not practical from a production mindset or standpoint. Uh, it's a great demonstration of how a weld can take, but on a production kind of thing, you're making a bunch of chain, pretty much if that weld's going to separate, as soon as you knock the sides together, it'll split or move past itself if it's not a good weld. Rusty Pearson says, do you ever pick it to sparks? Uh, occasionally, if I've got something that's really tricky, uh, but you have to remember the sparking into things, that is burning. So that's actually usually when you have too much oxygen in the fire. And there's, that, there's a real fine line there, really toting a fine line. Now, when I say take it to sparks, it's not sparking in the fire. When I bring it out, it starts sparking because it's exposed to the oxygen in the air. And when it does that, then you know it's at a really high temperature. And then you go to hammering on it before it uh, gets too gross on you and pimply. So we're up to temp, Jess. All right. Got me there? That link held together, so it welded. And we'll give it a brush. And then just go set it off on the floor somewhere. Mm -hmm. Off the side to cool. But that weld took all the way across there. Now I could take the time and try to weld, you know, clean up that joint a lot more. But for our purposes, it's not really necessary. We know that it's welded. We know that it handled the reshaping. 
and it didn't pop loose. Uh, so the rest is just purely aesthetics. And Mark Asprey has a video where he does some chain welding, and I talked to him briefly at a class one time about it, and he likes to leave that peak. He likes to leave a peak in his chain just to make sure people know that it's a hand-forged link and it's not a factory-made link. Uh, that way there's no mistake in those. Uh, and also that it doesn't look historical, so to speak. And, uh, you know, obviously a guy like Mark Asprey, he would be able to make something look like it's a historic link mm -hmm. and probably fool a whole lot of people. Right, right. So he leaves that little peak on there. All right. I'll go ahead and get another link in here. All right. it up. stomping ground so I grew quite I lived there for quite a number of years about I don't know off and on about seven years of my life was spent out there in Colorado so yep know it well all right what else honey okay well we got that heat done let's uh talk I'll take one question or answer and then I'll give everybody a shout out here Because on my conversion sheet here for half inch, it says 12.5 for half inch round. I guess you round up that extra 0.5 then, because all you can get is 13 mil. Would that be accurate? I would assume that they would sell your round bar stock in 12.5 mil bar stock. It would be 13 mil or round numbers would be my guess. Somebody comment if I'm dead wrong. Okay. <laughs> Billy Strong says, is it easier to make smaller links or larger links just starting out? Just starting out, the larger the link, the better. Um, usually. It gives you more time to work the weld joint and get things stuck and welded. Um, when, you're, when you've been doing it a while, you can weld smaller and smaller and smaller links. Uh, that's true with any forge welding. Uh, it usually takes a little bit. It takes more time than you think on uh, to get good at it. For, uh, from that type of perspective, when it's small stuff. Because small stuff does not give you the time. It doesn't give you those seconds, those valuable seconds to get that weld in. Uh, I demonstrated that with that collar, that really tiny collar on that bar stock. Mm -hmm. I mean, it had to be welded in just under, I mean, it was out, snap, snap, back in. Mm -hmm. Out, snap, snap, back in, like about that quick. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you're welding small, small stuff, it's the same way on welding links. You actually don't have that much time to weld together. So when you're first starting out, 
you're always kind of fumbling through the process. Okay, where's my hammer? Where's my tongs? Stuff like that. Uh, you know, trying to get your process arranged and things to make the weld. And that makes it very difficult to make a good weld on small material. Because when it comes out, it has to be welded within just a few seconds of it coming out of the fire. Otherwise, it oxidizes between those molten joints, and it won't stick, and it bounces apart. That's why, like, when I came out of the fire with it, I danced with it just a moment to get my hammer up and things like that before I went for the weld, and it had already oxidized between the joints. Just something to keep in mind. into the bottom of the fire, which isn't as good for the weld itself. timing. You said Mark S. said that? Yep. Yeah, most likely it's your timing. Your time element. There you go. One more welded link. Awesome. Like I said, you can dress these up to make them as pretty as you like. But for our purposes, they're going to work just fine. Now, I will say this about the fire. Any welding fire is not a forever fire, okay? So you have got to make sure you feed it with good coke. If you run out of coke, you can't just keep forcing yourself forward. <coughs> you have to take and build that fire back up before you can continue. If you, if you get the fire, and it's starting to burn hollow on you, you're going to burn links, you're going to over-oxygenate them, that's what's going to happen, so it's going to burn them, they're going to fall apart on you. So you have to keep rebuilding that core of that fire back up with coke. Now if you're working in a coke forge that's like metallurgical grade coke, you won't have this problem. All you got to do is make sure that you got a big enough bed between you and your air supply of that coke being on fire. Built that back up. Okay. Yeah, um, there's some comments about the conversion. Uh, let's see, working with Iron Nathan said 12 millimeters is half an inch here. Uh, Herb Page says that funny thing is that where he's at in Canada, they put the steel sizes in inches. <laughs> <laughs> there must be enough Americans in Canada then, maybe. I don't know. wrong with the rest of the world there and with the metric system. I can't figure it out for the life of me. Mm -hmm. oh, I guess it just depends. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's going to depend on what you're talking about. Is it cold rolled? 
Is it hot rolled? Those probably have two separate sizes. It's probably a range between 12.5, 12.7. Then does people just call it 13 mil? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's strange to me. Uh, even on the conversion chart, uh, like plus or minus like a 64th changes the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Like it just changes the whole equation. So I don't know. Our team development says he buys his in 6 millimeter, 9 millimeter, 12 millimeter, and such. Okay, so it's all like even numbers. Mm -hmm. My assumption. Prime numbers. Yep. Uh, Michael Smallwood says, Hi guys from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I've been watching your channel a lot, but it's, this is my first live stream. Awesome. Well, glad to have you part of the live stream. So, Okay, before this thing gets hot, I want to recognize a few people. This here? Okay. Just remembered it. We were supposed yeah. to do this a few heats ago. We were. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so this is the super chat. So for all of you that don't know, the super chat function is the little dollar sign beside your name where you can, you know, enter your comment. You can enter a super chat comment. And, uh, and that's a great way of supporting the live streams. It's what's helped us get all this camera gear and things like that. And we've got several people who support us on a regular basis through the Super Chats. We don't do a Patreon or anything like that. Uh, so, so this really goes to help set up all of our stuff. Uh, stops us from having to spend a lot of our own personal money like we have just got done doing. <laughs> yeah. We still do that too. But yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we still off. do that. It helps take the edge off though. Uh, so I just wanted to take and have everybody give these people a good hand clap in the comment section. Um, uh, the super chats from March 28th to April 20th or what, the last it's live stream? The last 30 days. Yeah, the last 30 days. Or anybody in the last 30 days? It was Josh Wright. Billy Strong, Basin Ironworks, or Derek Schmied, Graham Pepper, Arsene Development, we just talked to him. Yes, we did. Um, mm -hmm. Ben Colt, Champ Ironworks, Brent Leg, Shepherd's Forge H, Big Dog Forge, that's Tim, mm -hmm. and Big Dog Forge, Tough Enough, and Leon Scott. So make sure you give all of them a big hand clap in the comment section. Yes. Thank you all so much for yes, supporting the you. channel uh, and what we do, being able to bring live entertainment like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to let you all in on a little secret. Once we figure out this whole audio thing, we now have a second camera. So we will have a secondary camera angle yep. to our live streams coming very, very soon. Yeah make it a little less choppy. Yep, so there'll be an anvil cam that'll stay positioned where we're working and one out here so you guys can get a better thing and you don't have to go on a roller coaster ride yeah. each time. So, yep. But I just wanted to say thank you all very much. Jessica and I really do appreciate it. Yes, we do. Uh, it does help grow the channel. It helps us be able to reach more people uh, with our message and try to encourage and uplift on the daily, which we like to do. chatted earlier, didn't they not? Yeah. I want to make sure make sure you give the person who super chatted earlier. I'm sorry, I'm a little on the focusing side on the board welding here. Uh, Peter Tricker. Peter Tricker? Oh, yep. It was pounds, not euros. I apologize. Pounds, not I euros. <laughs> I caught up with all the little symbols. All right. Well, thank you, Peter. Thank you very much. Make sure everybody give him a hand clap. Yeah. Thank you all. Thomas B. We talk to all the super chatters. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, Jeff Stanley says, Hello, Roy and Jeff. Late again, but make it. Cool shirt. Seriously. You need a kilt to match. LOL. <laughs> I'm Scottish. My grandfather told me real men wear kilts. Well, I don't think I'll ever be a real man. My brother got one of those silly things. And uh, I just couldn't handle it, man. I just couldn't handle it. So <laughs> they, 
they kind of look cool at first, but I just, you know, I don't think I got the legs for it. I just don't think I got the legs for it. Got great calves, but I just don't think I got the legs for it. Pale white legs. Pale white legs. See my little chicken legs. You hardly ever wear shorts, though. Yeah, I don't ever wear shorts, usually. It takes, like, a lot for me to wear shorts. Probably ten times a year. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe. All right, we are almost up to welding needs. You want to bring it over here? Yeah. So since I've been joling on, I've been taking these up to a little higher welding heat uh, than what I normally do. But that way I can ensure that I make make the most of my weld straight out the gate. Here we go. another heat on this and blend it in. It is welded, so that's good enough for me. Like I said, you can blend in the welds as much as you like. about blending in the welds, I'm talking the toe, the scarf. Uh, I'm not worrying about blending that in. I could. I have enough mass here, but I don't want to take up your all's time too much to blend in the toes. Um, Plus, there's an additional item that I'm missing that helps with this process, and it's called a chain maker's bick or stake anvil, and what it does is it bends at a 90 degree and it has a hook on it Mm -hmm. and that hook is essentially a big giant swedge on the inside of the link that you can then rock this around like this and it forms the inside of the link as you form the outside of the link Mm -hmm. and hammer out your joint to round Um, and then that helps take care of the toe of the scarf as well all in the same stroke but I got a video coming out on that where I make that actual chain maker stake anvil. Oh. So how many people in the live stream, Jess? All right, we are currently at 66. Woohoo! Thank you all for being here with us tonight. Uh, T. Senek says this is his first live stream also. Awesome, T. Senek, good to have you here. I'm glad you came for the live stream. And I hope this is informative. Is anybody finding this for informative? I really hope it. I really hope you are. Yes, let us know. Uh, Tom C says it's going to be a nice setup. When you have two cameras. Oh yeah, it's going to be a nice one. Um, so some of so I'll talk a little bit more while this is heating up here uh, about it. So Jessica and I, we have decided this year that we want to do more. We are all about helping our, kind of our whole channel's premise is to take and help out other blacksmiths. So that is to help out um, with, you know, the teaching aspect. That's what I love to do personally and teach like fundamentals and practices, best practices, things like that. Obviously I spout my mind sometimes and it's not uh, it's not always well received uh, because I am an opinionated person. Uh, <laughs> kind of comes with my territory. But the big thing that Jessica and I really, really seek after with this channel, Christ Center and Ironworks, is to take and help other blacksmiths on their journey, whatever that may be, whether that's in your hobby or whether that's to help you start a business. And so that's why we're starting our Monday night series, a Monday night live stream series for business. And it's centered around, catered around blacksmithing businesses, trying to help you guys go further and help build your businesses. And we really, 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 really super hope 
that that is going to be a lot of value to you all out there. Um, even if you're not thinking about doing blacksmithing as a business, but maybe a one day kind of thing, please join us on that live stream. Anyhow, come join us, be a part of the chat, things like that. It will be in our new studio setup, so we're really excited about that, huh, honey? Yes, we are. Um, I think you guys are going to really, really like it. Uh, we put a lot of work into it. it. Took about three days to build, so yeah, uh, three long days to build, <laughs> but we got it done. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And one of the benefits, one of the things that we are hoping to offer during that live stream. Uh, for those that want to get in on it, will be for any super chat donation during that live stream. That's twenty-five dollars or more. Twenty-five dollars and up. Are we having an okay with audio? Okay, we're we're good? good. Okay. You keep checking it, so I'm yeah. so I'm checking you to make sure we're good. Yeah, somebody said it's fine. I was just trying to check it. Out. Okay. So uh, basically, so anybody that's in that business live stream. As a $25 super chat or more, we will take and do a live review for you of how you can do better on your business. So whether that be your Etsy store, that be your website, that be your YouTube channel, or um, I don't even know if there's any other ones other than that. You know, uh, it could be your Amazon store, wherever it is that you plug in. To, and you get the most of your revenue or that you're thinking about building a business on a platform, Jessica and I, we have been doing this online business. Next year will be a decade for us. Yeah. We've been doing this nine years. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, it'll be nine years this fall that we have been doing online business yeah. building. Started on our eBay. Own, yeah, our own business itself. So, uh, you know, we want to take and pass that information along to everybody else mm -hmm. because when we first got started, uh, we were told that, no, you can't make it as a blacksmith. Ah, that'll never work. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a dying art? Uh, you know, a bunch of different stuff. Well-meaning smiths that, uh, you know, had been in business doing blacksmithing, telling me how hard it would be and it's really not worth your time and a bunch of things it like that. It takes perseverance. That it it takes true. perseverance, you know. Uh, like I said, they were well-meaning. It wasn't like they were trying to, like, skunk me or something. Um, but we are here today and we are able to bring to you live streams and things of that nature um, because, you know, we said yes to that opportunity and we said yes to, essentially, we said yes to our, to that dream, if you will, you know. I could have went and worked at Walmart, I could have went and did a lot of other things when I had my accident. Uh, but I decided to listen uh, to what, at that time, I strongly believe was the call of the Lord on my heart mm -hmm. to get into blacksmithing. There was something to this, and this is what I needed to do for a living and for my life. And so if I can make it, you all can too. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jessica and I really want to pour ourselves into you all, really so forth, a lot of good effort that way. Yes, we do. So, yep. Is anybody in the chat yes, commenting? Yes, Yes. Uh, let's see. Guy Perry, I will have to watch the Monday live streams after they stream. Mondays don't work for me. That's all right. You can always watch. You can always watch them on the replay. Yep. Uh, Champ Ironworks Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time. That is correct. Yep. That is very correct. Uh, Beowulf says, "I guess I'm lucky because I'm already selling the all that I can make right now." That's yours. You do pretty good then. You can always scale up. Or Paige says, Roy, this old dog can always find good info in your videos. And yes, you can teach an old dog new tricks as I have to learn a few new tricks. Awesome. That is the type of attitude we like, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Billy Strong says, are you going to break a new plot for the new series? LOL. <laughs> no, no, we're not going to break, smash any more clocks yet. Yes. Yet. We've got a special little plan coming in the future for a whole lot of clocks. Yep. So be prepared for that. Uh, Ford the Hunter Ford says, what about trying to pursue all the dreams and not being able to focus, LOL? <laughs> 
Yes, if you need help focusing, we can tell you how to focus, too. Yeah, we actually saw, uh, we were on Instagram briefly earlier, and we saw your wife was doing um, some uh, wedding videography, which we thought was cool. Yeah, we thought that was awesome. I was like, who is this person? Who is this lady? And I'm like, oh, for the honor. I'm like, but isn't that a forge? Is this a knockoff Instagram account? And then I'm like, oh, no, okay, it must be his wife. <laughs> Uh, I do not know when my next class at SOFA will be. Uh, I proposed quite a few classes there. Uh, they've got a new workshop coordinator that is working on getting classes arranged. I think he said he had about six, six classes already this year booked, so I don't know if they booked out the rest of this year or what the deal is. Um, if it doesn't work out with SOFA, uh, to do a class or a workshop this year, uh, I might be considering going around to some uh, some of the other local blacksmithing clubs. So maybe Rabba would have me for a blacksmithing class, or um, the Cincinnati Blacksmiths Guild. Maybe they would do something of that nature, and I could offer a class through one of those places. If you're around the Cincinnati area or the Cleveland area of Ohio. Or I can go out of state, too, if there's a enough interest and a big enough class and kind of mm -hmm. the metrics work out. So, yeah. Yep. So, so we're up to welding heat. Yep. So you can keep shooting questions my way while I weld. All right. you crank the blower. You don't want to crank the blower real fast at all. I'm going to take another heat on this and get that welded one more time. Okay. I lost the link right mid-weld, so... channel a great place uh, a lot of a lot of the older guys the Smiths have been doing it a while I like you guys to feel free to leave your comments out there uh, I monitor very heavily my comment section against trolling of any kind it's not acceptable no cuss words no profanity no racism no snark remarks things like that because I boot you that quick and so you know, if you want to leave good sound wisdom for the guys that are just getting into it, please do in the comment section. So, um, and you beginners as well. If you've got some good sound wisdom or advice or something of that nature, again, feel free to leave that in the comment section. Just do it in a family-friendly way. Uh, Jackson Kopler says, I'm sorry, I haven't been able to catch the live stream. I've been very busy with Hey, that's all right, buddy. You got to learn. You got to do your thing. We will still be here, still teaching when you're done with your studies. Uh, Chip Ironworks says, do you separate days for production work and other days for commission work? Um, right now, I don't have any production work. Uh, I'm pretty much getting out of production and only doing custom work from here on out. Uh, as far as if you have both of those going, um, usually you can throw a production item on the fire in between heats of something that you're doing that's custom work. I'm at heat, honey. Okay. Let's do this. You good? Yep. 
be on the porch unless you have good speed from the fire to the pit. That comes from kind of knowing where you want to be. And then just going there. You kind of have to have that planned out in your mind how you're going to work that before you come out of the forge. Uh, that's always the best if you can. Uh, sometimes I'll flub up and I'll forget, ah, I forgot my tongs or I forgot the, my hammer or I had something laying on the anvil that wasn't conducive to me getting a weld. And I'll just quickly stick the loop back in the fire, clear the anvil, and then uh, go back to town. Uh, so much of blacksmithing is orchestrating the process. Picture yourself as kind of like a maestro, like the head maestro of an orchestra, and you've got to conduct the process. So none of your tools know where to be unless you tell them to be there. So you have to make sure that you orchestrate your process and run through it several times before you get going. And that's how you can get quicker over here. Uh, also, another thing, if you want to zoom out, Jess. Okay. A help to speed. Down here, up, up, or up, at you? up here, okay. please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can they see me? Yep. I'm in focus. You are in focus. There you go. Good. Hopefully, I'm in focus. Okay. So, another good thing to take and do, <coughs> I do kind of a backhand draw motion. So, I'll be here in the fire. This piece will be heated, ready to come out. I'll get my tongs on it, make sure there's nothing in the way, and I take a plant foot, so my left leg, if you will, in this case, since this is to my right, and I set it to about where I'm going to stand away from the anvil. So when I come out of the fire, I pull it straight out, and I draw across my body, tap it on the anvil, and then hit. So hopefully they can see that. Mm -hmm. I'll do that motion again. Can you see the anvil now? Yep. So, okay. So I draw out and then go right to town on it. So it should be that smooth. And if you need to practice that a few times, you got to practice it, right? Mm -hmm. And you just go quicker and quicker until you can do it. Of course, there's no point in hitting it right now because it's cold, but you know, you just come out, practice that draw motion. and go right to town on it. Mm -hmm. After you get this weld set, then you can come out here and walk in your vine. You can take the extra time. Where a lot of people's problems come in, they start here. I don't know if you can see up here. Yeah. Can you see me yeah. still? Mm -hmm. They start here at the fire, okay? Then they come over to the anvil like so, and then hit it. By then you've lost most of your welding heat even on half inch round, or 12.7, 12.5, or 13 mil. <laughs> Whatever it may be. So, so it's that twist, it's more of a twist. Have a plant foot, come out, down. Come out, practice, down. Come out, practice, down. You have to have that motion where you grip your hammer handle where all that is in exactly the same thing every time. Mm -hmm. You never let it be like that. You never let it be over here. You always make sure that it's in the same motion. No fooling around. No finding your die or anything like that. That's all garbage. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Leave it in the right place that it's supposed to. Up, down. It should be a swoop motion. Not there you go. <laughs> Secret to speed and efficiency. Secret to speed. All right, questions? Yes. Answers? Graham, he said he made 12 tulips today, and two of them he traded for a car. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> he a Porsche? <laughs> Was it a Porsche? <laughs> Those must be some fancy tulips, Graham. Yeah. You know what? Oh, you know what? We need to have Graham as a special guest on our business hour. Yeah. How do you trade two tulips for a car? <laughs> That's right. Unless it was a heater. Unless it was a heater with a beater. 
yeah. or a beater with a heater, right. whichever one. Uh -huh. He also gave us a two dollar super chat and says, "It's my tradition now. I gotta go." Hey, thank you, thank you, Graham. Appreciate it. Uh, Herb Page, so can we have Jess make the next link? <laughs> what do you so, think, Jess? I don't think I can pull that one off. I'm not as fast as you on the draw. You well, could try. I guess I could try. We've got an extra one here. You've got glasses. Yeah, I do have glasses. I suppose I could. She's, tending, she's turning ten shades of red right I, now. You know, why not? If I you want to try it? I guess so. All right. Well, here, let me at first set up the... Let me set up the joint first, and then you can make the weld. How's that sound? Okay. Huh? Okay. Okay. All right, we're going to set up the joint, ladies and gents, and then we'll let her weld. <laughs> Attempt. Attempt to weld. <laughs> so I'll do the scarves, and then I'll let her do that. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, earlier on, this was, I don't know, a couple weeks ago now. I don't know. Somebody gave me heck about making an anvil block, a radius edge block. Uh, everything from copying Joey Van Deerstig to uh, the fact that I like sharp edges on my anvil, but here I go and make a radius block for the anvil. Kind of, uh, what do you want to call, hypocritical, if you will. So... I'll explain my devious actions and plans here. Since I like to think ahead, unlike people who say stuff in comment sections, this is so this way if you don't, because I was going to use it for this stream tonight, as an example, if you don't have good sharp edges on your anvil or a corner like you see here, that you can very easily draw down this clip, you can use the tong block, or this radius block, if you will, to do that, to create yourself a corner that you can draw off of. You can also use this to get between two shoulders that you need to set down. You can make it with all sorts of different radii on it. You can do it however you like. I personally like, you know, this has about a quarter inch radius all the way around it, and that's perfectly fine. But the purpose of this, as I was thinking ahead, was to take and draw down the, pull out the scarves on these links. Now, I have an anvil here, but I, that has a really nice corner, but I realize some of you ladies and gents do not. So that's why I made that block. So there's my explanation. Hopefully I explained myself well enough. Mm -hmm. How many weird comments do I got now? Uh, not yet. <laughs> Nobody? Okay. They're probably all just waiting for me to hush and let you forge, huh? Yeah, I guess. They're like, Thomas hush, Steve. Roy. Thomas Steve, nah, you can do it, Jess. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see indeed. Okay, I'm going to get her set up here. you know you're gonna stick around. But what am I, chopped liver? <laughs> we'll be on the forge, she told Asterix says, realize this is common, it might be taken the wrong way. His own face turns a bit red, another Asterix, and then parentheses, sorry a minute, innocently and only in reference to forging. <laughs> Second 
Yeah, you're all right. Huh? Piper Maddox says, LOL, I made a block with sharp edges for that reason. No sharp edges on my anvil. Yeah, well, be very careful, Tectron Maddox, because if you're a fan of rounded edges and make sharp edges for your anvil block, you might get called out on it someday. <laughs> if you make a video on it. Horrible. Absolutely horrible showing new guys out there what you can do. <laughs> Anyways, that was kind of eating at me a little bit. I figured I'd take and talk to my AA group out here, my support group that yeah, comes to I, live streams. I guess that'd be BA, Blacksmiths Anonymous. Yeah, yeah, Blacksmiths Anonymous, <laughs> our BA group. That's what we'll start calling it. Yeah. Going on? Questions? Yes, I can do that. Uh, Beowulf, no need to explain, Roy. Good. Champ Ironworks, aw oh, man, me too, bad missing reference. Uh, ben Doom, or Mega Paul says sound is delayed too, and Ben Doom says Roy's faster than sound. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh. Uh, if you're having problems with the sound syncing up, Sometimes I've had that problem and I've had to relaunch the live stream. Uh, sometimes you get a little bit of lag from the carrier signal or YouTube does. It creates a little bit of lag in the stream and then you don't get the sound. Uh, we've been trying to get our audio synced up a lot closer, but sometimes that doesn't translate across all platforms and devices. Brian Neely said, what's the smallest chain you ever made? I don't know if I read that one earlier or not. Nope, you haven't. Uh, the smallest chain I've ever attempted to make uh, was a one link type deal. And I kind of bludgeoned the heck out of it. It did stick, but it was a quarter inch round stock. Uh, it did stick, but again, it was really difficult. I had to try it, go three or four different attempts. I was mainly just practicing to see if I could get that smallest stock to stick together. So it didn't even have scarves. It was just kind of lapping it over one another. Um, and it did weld, uh, So, but that wouldn't be chained. Probably the smallest I've ever done was like 3 8 inch lengths. So maybe we'll do that one live stream. Forging micro chain. Yeah. Forge welding micro chain. That would be really tiny. As a test. T. Fennec says, do you have an opinion about Colonial Homestead in Millersburg, Ohio? Uh, never heard of it, so no, I do not. I imagine it might be a neat place. Like I said, never heard of it. Sounds interesting. For the Honor Forge says, oh, oh, can you give advice for moderating comments? Question mark. My wife and I have some stuff we are working on, and the struggle with trolls is real. <laughs> What's that? The struggle with trolls is real. I know. What was his comment again? Uh, that what? they're working on some stuff, and that they were asked about how uh, how to moderate. How to moderate? Um, don't get too sensitive about it. Block them instantly. Yeah. Don't waste your time arguing out points or facts or figures, because chances are, if they have enough gall to like really call you out for free information that you're offering. They're not your friend, <laughs> mm -hmm. and they probably don't care to hear anything else you have to say. You're just going to start a fight. I get sucked into trolls every now and then in the comment sections, and I just found it's easier to block them straight away. Yeah. Um, you know, like you can always it's just how like I do it. Kind so. of a flat comment, and then see what they respond back. Yeah. You know, it's not so much a negative comment. It's if it's a defaming or, you know, hey, you're dumb or, you know, you don't know what you're talking about or so and so is so much better than you and a whole host of other things. Pretty much if they hit you with any sort of vulgarity, like straight out the ba bank, uh, you didn't get a part of YouTube and you didn't get a part of Facebook or any other social media platform to be called everything but a, but a, a person, right? 
I won't say white person, black person, Indian, Caucasian, male, female, doesn't matter, a person. You're a human being and should be respected as such. So if somebody comes out with straight up angst against that and no respect, give them the ban, Hama. Yep. Oh. And if you're running a YouTube, YouTube will allow you to set moderators in the comment sections. Billy Strong gave us a $5 super chat. Hey, Billy Strong, thank you so much for your continued support. We really greatly appreciate that. Techers Max says it's Sunday here and you're dressed like a pirate. I hope you're not turning into a pastaforian, Roy. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. I've never heard that term before. Pastaforian. Yeah, Manga 12 says pastaforian. Where have I heard that before? I have no clue what that is, but I'm going to look it up with Google. <laughs> <laughs> Right after this stream's over with. Oh, okay, honey. Yep. I about got this up to heat. Okay. Are you okay. gonna stand over there and supervise, or come over yep. here? And... I'm gonna stand over here and supervise here in just a second to read okay. comments. So Jessica's gonna try her first ever forge weld and first ever forge link based upon your guys' recommendations. <laughs> so if she gets hurt or anything else, it's all your fault. You're blaming them. Yeah, I'm blaming them. Well, technically, it's the camera that I'm blaming. <laughs> I was going to say, you're pointing at the camera. Yeah. The computer. The computer. You people there. That's on that screen over there. So, go ahead okay. and wear this. Wear gloves. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so, you want to take this up to where it looks like a bright lemon yellow, okay? Mm -hmm. Like it's bright to where it's almost too hot to see in there, okay? okay. All right. Out towards where the end of that link is, which is about right where my fire poker is, okay? Okay. So you look in there, okay, and then all you have to do is grip it like so, okay? okay? Uh -huh. So it's not up to temp yet. It's like and a bright orange, okay? You set okay? it here on this edge? Nope, you just set it right here and hit it. Okay. Flat. Okay. Okay? Just like how so, hard. So like... flat like the chain like this. Uh, not real hard, just to pop, okay? Okay. You can bring it out and you're going to hit, hit, hit. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And then you're going to stick it back in the fire. Okay. And then the next heat, you'll come out. Instead of it being flat, you'll come here, and you'll just kind of tap it. Okay. Just tap. Not real hard hits, just tap. Okay. Okay? <laughs> All righty. Think you can do it? I think I'm trying. I think you can do it. Okay. All right. That's what multiple heats are for. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, All right. I'm going to move over here, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and talk, Tess. All right. Um, yes. Uh, oh, I have my logo shirt on today, guys. I'm not matching Roy. I don't have a pirate shirt. But. <laughs> so, all right. Let's see here. We got Clay Sapp says, go Jess. Uh, NRGM GMT said, Jessica, we believe in you. Call us. Go Jess. <laughs> Let's see here. You can do it, Jessica. Don't jinx her, Roy. <laughs> Guy Fairy, you can do it, Jess. Is it possible to burn this? Huh? Is it possible to burn? If you see sparks coming out of a fire, yes. Okay. No sparks. Probably up pretty close to the temperature, okay? okay. Do you want to reset the camera? Huh? 
Roy's, yep. get, Roy's getting a taste right now of what it's like to be the comment manager in the yep. camera. I'm not very good at it at all. They're going to they're gonna yell at me, say, bring back Jess, <laughs> bring back Jess. Let me see what I got here. Hopefully we're all in shot. It looks like we're really good. There we are. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Here. Yeah. Go ahead and grip it. Okay. Oh, hard to see. Where did it go? Grab the end of the link. Oh. We'll take a minute. It's blending right now. Yeah, just just kind of use the tongs to kind of fork the coke out of the way. There you go. Can you see it? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, there it is. Okay. Ready? There. Set. Go. Goodness. Hit it again, hit it again. Good job, keep going. Keep going. There you go. That weld set. Flip it. Flip. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> that was a lot of... Alright, slow. Well, that's okay. good, okay. Like, wow, that's ugly. <laughs> Alright. All right. So now go ahead and throw it back in the forge. Okay, does it need more flux or no? Nope. Okay. I think you got plenty there. Uh, don't dig it into the bottom. Set okay. it up closer to the top if you can. Okay. Good job. Man, that was kind of hot. <laughs> well, that was a little hot. Just, just a little. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think about that? Exciting. <laughs> Exciting, huh? Yeah. All right. My first forge weld. I don't think I've ever forge welded anything before. <laughs> nope. So. <laughs> Definitely not going to be as pretty as yours, but... <laughs> Graham Bever said, bring back Jess. <laughs> s and S. Smithing, good to still have you here. Okay, see how many people we got here. That's Sammy, cool. So, let's see here. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, if I've missed any chats and stuff. There's quite a few of them. It does get tough to keep up. <laughs> yep. Sarah Mike G said, great job, you two. For the honor Ford said, yay. Nice, as Lynn Branstead. <laughs> Jam Meyerwick says, that's how you swish cheese a flannel, folks. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh yeah, that's why you always have the little holes in your yep. shirts. It's probably from forge welding. <laughs> yep. Everybody's saying great job. Yep, fireworks are going off with every hammer blow, that's for sure. Alright. Can you blow this up to heat? Alright. Okay, you think more. it's almost there? I think so. Okay. So on this one, do I grab it from the side and so, take it to no, the No, grab it the same way you did before. Okay. And then bring it straight to the anvil face and tap it again, okay? okay. Tap it Just together like again. Okay. And then go ahead and then go to the horn like I told you. Okay. Okay? All right. Go for it. All right. You got enough air there. Yep. It's kind of burning a little bit, so it's okay. Bring it out. Come on. Hit it like you mean it. There you go. Now come to here. Go. Take your time. You got a little bit of time. Hammer on it. Joint opening up or is it welded? I think it's welded. All right. Go ahead and hammer on around on it there. All right. Good job, Jess. Good job, huh? Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Jessica now I has officially wait. took it over Christ Centered uh, Ironworks. No, I don't know about so. that. Loosen your grip. There you go. Good job. Do All right, why don't you go it? ahead and give it a brush. Okay, that's what I figured. Let's give it a brush and see what happens. So, oh, I'm it. a bad cameraman. They totally missed all oh, that. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry, ladies and gents. Let me zoom in here. Let's zoom way in. Give me a second okay. here, Shug. Hold it still. All right. Hold it stable. All right, roll it around. Okay. Just flip it. There you go. All right. Then now tap another. the link to square up that link. So tap on that end, turn it up, yep. on edge. On edge? No, up no. on edge, like I was doing my this links. Way? Yeah, and now Here. hammer straight down there. Here. Up a little bit. 
more. Just square up the sides. Yeah, a little more. And whoa. Yep. How's that look? Yeah, not too bad. It's still welded? Yeah, I think so. I well, I don't right there it kinda looks a little separate. I don't know. You'll have to take a take a look at it. Alright. Well you know what? Maybe. For camera's sake, put it down on the anvil. Okay. Mm -hmm. For camera's sake, we're gonna call that welded. Okay. <laughs> it looks good to me. Alrighty. Good job. Good job. Is that it over with your other links? Huh? Yep. Put it over here. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the woman of the hour. <laughs> I'll leave that out. You're, so, you're not done, right? <laughs> Somebody said, make her do it again. <laughs> practice makes perfect, right? <laughs> yeah, practice made perfect. I so. think that's all your, all your stock, just about. But. No, I got one more. Oh, do you? So, yeah. All right, I'll trade places with you. I don't like right. being over there. <laughs> don't you? No. Nope. They missed half the. They missed half of it. <laughs> yeah, they missed half of it. I'm sorry, there, ladies and gents. I'm a bad guy when it comes to that type thing. <laughs> Mark asked says, "Looks like I'm with the pe teacher paid off." <laughs> Only for a few moments. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. You got it mostly fused. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Oh, Good thank job. You. Set that on the trophy shelf, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, Peter. Thanks for sticking around to watch. Uh, yeah. Catch thanks, you on the Peter. Next one. Catch you on the next one. All right. That is what we're going to be doing now. Going to find that out. Yep. So I'm actually I got to make the scarf, so I'm just oh. going to do the scarves and stuff. Okay. Uh, but basically, basically you start linking these together, and you make a set of three. So you take two links, you thread them onto one that hasn't been welded yet, close up that link, and then forge weld it. Mm -hmm. And then you take lengths of three. And then you link them together to make lengths of seven. Then you take those and you link them with a link, those two lengths of seven, to make a length of 15. Mm -hmm. And so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Until you get the desired chain length that you're looking for. So you have a bunch of little short stubby ones to start with. Yep, so you have a bunch of little stubby ones to start with. Then you add them up as you go. So we'll take and weld these two together on this link that I'm prepping. So the big trick is you don't want to take and burn your other links while you uh, get this one welded, basically. You know, you want to keep those out of the fire and they kind of become a bit of a shifting around, kind of annoying thing, you know, the links until you get a length of them on where they dangle by themselves naturally. 
-hmm. Having those two in there, they want to fight you and get in your way. So there's a little bit of a trick to it. What's going on, huh? Jim Fireworks says, don't fight over camera time, you two. You're both pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Jess is, but I don't know about me. Oh. All right, honey, we're going to yep. go over here to the anvil, and you can keep shooting comments or questions my way. All right, Graham says, Jess, now you've done one more forge weld than I have. Yep, he sure, <laughs> ha sure has. All right, you good? Yep, we're good. All right. By the way, when I ask her if she's good, I'm just making sure that she's ready for me and I'm not rushing her. So, because it takes a little bit of time in those type of cues to know when the other person's ready. understand the question. I think he was referencing what's the best um, heating method for chain making. I suggest coal. Coke is better. So if you can forge in just straight up metallurgical grade coke and a coke forge, that's even better for chain making. Uh, the, the green coal fire with the, you know, coking up and forging in this type of fire, it is a good fire for this, uh, but there's a lot of Nancy and around of it with the links and having to tear the fire out, put the fire together and stuff like that, as where uh, with coke forges, you kind of just rake, put your thing in, rake it back over, and you're done. So there's a little less fiddling with them to get the links to heat, so. Len Brad says that it will take him a while to make a 20 foot chain. <laughs> yeah, it will. Jim Pineworks, 15 links or 14.7? Question. <laughs> <laughs> Might be 14.7. Graham says, so what happens if you only want 14 links? Then you have to link them one at a time. Yeah. Past that seven or so. Or whatever is divisible by that one joining link. Jeff Stanley says, my daughter's motto, sweat dries, blood clots, suck it up buttercup, only real good girls become blacksmiths. Also, <laughs> Sounds like a tough girl. Yeah. Mike G says, what is the chain going to be used for? Uh, purely ornamentation. I might use it uh, for my own purposes, for like, just as like a drag chain or something of that nature. But, uh, yeah, it's mainly a purpose. I'm going to be adding all these links slowly together, slow but sure. I'll be adding them to a larger and larger sections of chain. It's kind of on my bucket list to make a chain of about 100 foot long, just to say that I've forge welded that many links that many times. So it's kind of a bucket list thing for me. You know what I did? Uh, yeah, Frank Stock just said it. I thought that was supposed to be the link to join the other two links. You, <laughs> you guys out there didn't tell me at all. You're going to just let me weld it, weren't you? <laughs> And it's up to welding temp, too. Uh, you gotta unbend it, or you just go prep new pieces. What I'm doing here in the ashes is I'm dropping the temperature of that weld 
that weld area without letting it oxidize by putting it in that dirt and junk on the ashes that prevents it from oxidizing so this way I can open it back up now since no one let me know in the comment section uh, he just did except it took me a second to read the comment ah <laughs> well thank you for letting me know okay that's going to be the link to join the other two links now So we're going to slip those on just like so, and now we're going to bring it back again. <laughs> Go again, round two. And you'll see how much of a kind of a pain these two links start becoming. They just like to get in the way. Yeah, they look like it. This is the most tricky part of this kind of thing. Like I said, once you've got three together, they're easier to join. Mm -hmm. They're much easier to join after you've got a set of three together. So we got that good to go. Now we'll flux the joint again. Since we rubbed most of all that flux off in the cold filings and stuff. And now we're going to shift to my other pair of tongs. Like so. This will allow me to make this weld easier mm -hmm. and allow those to stop fighting the tongs. That's the 90 degree bend? That's the 90 degree bend tongs. Cool. So we'll shift to those now. Mm -hmm. Into the fire it goes. Let's see. Uh, ben, Brian Neely, have you ever made a chain hook? Maybe an idea for the next live stream. Uh, no, I've never made a chain hook. That would be neat. one at a time. I think the three at a time is the most efficient way of making them because you make a bunch of pre-links like this and you can have a bucket of these. You can have a bucket of these pre-links like this. Hopefully I'm in shot. Yeah, you were your head was a little off. Okay. But you know you can make a whole bucket of these pre-links if you will and then you can come in and join them into threes and then you have a whole bucket of threes and then when you get the day, all you have to do is make one link, scarf it, bring two, two sections of three together, and bam, now you've got lengths of seven. And, you know, it just makes it a little more productive that way. Michael Smallwood says, what is the best piece of advice you have for a beginner blacksmith such as myself? Single most best piece of advice, and I'm a broken record when it comes to this, focus on your fundamentals. Get a good, strong, firm foundation in the fundamentals of blacksmithing. That's not the basics of blacksmithing, that's the fundamentals of blacksmithing. So forge welding, uh, tapers, offsets, bosses, set downs, bins, things of that nature. Uh, get a good strong foundation in those fundamentals and learn your hammer control very early on. A lot of guys they want to just jump straight to a project and they say well I'll learn the hammer control later and they don't take and make practice on like oh that's an ugly taper cut it off go again. Oh that's another really ugly taper cut it off go again. You want to go make an ugly taper turn into an ugly hook with an ugly twist with an ugly hole punch through it, and that's just that's all beginners. That's where we that's where we all start. So don't feel bad about that. I'm not ragging on anybody uh, because I was that. I didn't have no one to tell me no, I've got and proof. I didn't have no yeah. Jessica's got proof. I didn't have no one to tell me what was the right way or the wrong way to do something. And so I was just getting started with the best way I knew how. Uh, so that's an okay start, but if you can learn from somebody and get a real good strong fundamentals, basics in the fundamentals, and practice those fundamentals till you get good at them, 
that's the best tip I can give you. I know that sounds kind of like a broad answer, but we got a lot of videos on the fundamentals of blacksmithing on the channel that you can go check out. Uh, that should help a little better, understanding-wise. Manga12 says, where are you going to store such a chain? I don't know. Maybe just drape it in the rafters. <laughs> there you go. Decoration. It's like Throughout a, the shop. What do they call that? Like, party... I'll put like party uh, lights through it. Uh, that would be cool. You could do that. Yeah. Uh, ben Toop says a leash for a chihuahua. <laughs> um, or the honor forge. Ooh, chainmail for giants. Yeah. All right. This is hot, baby. Okay. All right. We're in focus. You're in focus. You're about right here on the ammo. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Jeff Stanley, I've got vacation time. I'll come help you forge links for, from the 50 foot to the 75 foot mark. Hey, there we go. That wasn't a super high welding heat, so we're going to take it one more time and get that welded some more. out there. In fact, I actually have plans on buying some of the cheaper manufacturers of anvils that have the lower price point stuff and doing reviews on them for you guys out there. So if you're tight on cash, you don't have to waste your money to do so. I'll just waste my money to do so. <laughs> yeah. Plus, I'll have additional anvils that are really junk, so when I have somebody in the shop that I don't trust with Olga, I can just let them wail on that. Said. For the honor forge says, I just noticed how you water your forge. I use the seat camera poles on a forge handle. Yep, that can be good. Just be careful with that soup can that you don't dunk the fire pot too much because you can end up cracking your fire pot. That's a pretty common thing that ends up happening to a lot of guys. Good and hot, baby. Alright. I'm gonna make one more weld here. And your TV star there. All right, so there we have it. <coughs> Those are welded together. Go. Got a weird little bump I'm going to dress off. There we go. And there you have it. 
And that is how you forge weld some chain up, folks. Now Jessica's link that she welded together was going to be my link that I was going to forge weld my previous set of chain that I had made up. <laughs> oh yeah. To this set it. of chain mm -hmm. to show you show you a length of seven and how to manage that. But I did not prep enough bar stock, so yeah. you'll have to forgive me on that. Yeah, we're still we're an hour and forty minutes in. An hour and 40 minutes in. Cool. Do you want so. to cut, cut off another piece or that takes too much um, preparation? It'll probably take, we'll probably run over in 15 minutes by the time I cut off a piece and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but basically you would do the same thing with this. You'd have a link in these. These would both be threaded on, but unlike, <coughs> see if I can do a hypothetical link here. Uh, I don't have anything. Um, but unlike with the lengths of three, okay, now you're going to have stuff that hangs pretty good on its own weight. Mm -hmm. Can they see this yeah. in the shot? Mm -hmm. So you're going to have something that's going to really hang on its own weight pretty good. So these will just hang off the side of the anvil pretty, pretty nicely now when you get them welded in here. So it'll actually, it actually gets a little easier. You think it gets tougher, but it doesn't. Uh, once you get some longer lengths, then it becomes tough again. So once you've got like in excess of maybe three of these welded together, right? So say you have, uh, you join three and then you join seven and now you got a length of 15, right? Now you, now it become difficult because now you've got all this excess weight hanging from your tongs. And you got to get creative about where you hang the extra links. Sometimes guys will hang them from the tongs themselves way back here on the reins. They'll just loop them through like so. Hopefully you guys can see that fine. They'll loop them like this and you'll have a whole bunch piled up on the tongs, but it's still heavy. It's still quite heavy. Uh, one of the other options for this is a tool that is like a blacksmith's arm or third arm that sits in the pritchel hole of the anvil and it swings over with a hook on it. So it holds up all the excess weight of that chain that you're making. And then if you get too big or you make too big of chain, you don't even do that. You usually have a jib above you, a little jib crane or boom crane above you on the thing, you can zoom it out now. Okay. You'll have a crane above the forge then if you're getting real into it that's mounted to the wall that has a hook on it that can swing and it holds all that chain length up on that hook so you can go from forge to anvil with that chain dangling from the ceiling mm -hmm. and make your joints that way. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, so, so it becomes, like I said, think of yourself as a forging maestro, if you will. You are the maestro in the forge, and you have to orchestrate this whole process, so it takes some pre-planning ahead of time before you get into it. Uh, the last thing you want to do, have links hot, have people ready to help you, or it, say you had a bunch of chain you were doing, this, that, what have you, and, you know, you don't have your tongs, you left them at the other place uh, or in your truck. Um, you know, metal's hot and you forgot the flux. You know, stuff like that, simple things like that. Uh, the metal's hot, but you got the anvil four more steps away from the forge than what it needs to be, right? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. So that those things all impede you getting a good weld and being able to be efficient. So tonight we made one, two, three, four, five, six, we made six links, essentially, and joined a section of three mm -hmm. in roughly hour and 45 minutes. And mm -hmm. that was with Jessica's time, mm -hmm. so that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we could have had a length of seven done pretty much in that, about the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. We could have had a length of seven done. So about seven links for two hours, so you know, that's three and a half, pretty much three and a half links an hour.
Mm. It's what I was able to do this evening during a demonstration. Yeah. It goes a lot quicker without demonstrating. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is if you remember, I already had some of these links pre-forged and set up. So I took an hour in advance getting a lot of this bar stock cut and ready. So that all goes into it. But once you get to the actual forge welding bit, it doesn't actually take that long to get the links going mm -hmm. together and all the forge welds. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, Debacle makers, I just came in from my forge. Roy, your advice was well applied, and thank you for taking the time to help me. Hey, very welcome, Debacle Maker. Thank you for coming in and visiting. Mike G says, Roy, thinking of your shirt, I hand sewn my 18th century outfit when I was in that historic blacksmith shop. Woohoo! Better man than me. The best I've done is given myself stitches before. But I don't think that counts as real sewing. So. And it got, I don't suggest that. It got infected and I had to pull every last one of them out and it was a big nasty mess. Uh, uh, so. Blush is a little different than fabric. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I used a red thread. It had, I don't know, it had dye in it too. So it was a dyed color thread and yeah it don't do that Lovely. kids you may think you're tough and so sew, sewing up your own wounds but it sucks when you have to pull all those back out because it gets infected Jeff Stanley agreed completely got started and thought I was doing great then went back to focusing on the fundamentals and other great Smith that that you and other great Smiths on here teach good good yep it's it's something that I have to go back uh, you know, there's days that I get in the shop and, uh, you know, I'll take and I'll just practice, go ahead and, you know, I'm just going to practice fundamentals for the day and I'll come out and I'll, you know, I'll just do some offsets and some little things and bits and bobs. And usually I'll make videos around it and things of that nature just because I want to get practiced. Again, I want to keep my skills sharp. Um, you know, you can get so into making one item that you forget a lot of fundamentals. So things like this. I haven't forge welded chain in a really long time. So it's been at least six plus years since the last time I made a, a link of three. Mm -hmm. So, you know, today was a great day to do this and fool around with it. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's kind of what it's all about, so... Alan Murdoch says, still time to cut another piece for the last one. <laughs> <laughs> they really want to see me make that last one, don't they? They do. They're like, oh. it's incomplete. It's incomplete. <laughs> oh, I don't know. What time is it, Jess? Uh, it is, we are one hour and 47 minutes in. Uh, it's actually 8.55. Right so it's 8.55, but we're one hour, well, we started late, so. Yeah, that's true. One hour and 47 minutes. Let's see. The heat's on. Let's see if I can get another link made. <laughs> real quick. suggest you stitch yourself. Leave that to a doctor. So a smart man always makes himself spare? a spare. Ah. Always. Uh, T Finnick, I've got time. Warby <laughs> Shire, you can do it, Roy. 
Man, I'm glad everybody's so confident in me. So supportive. Frank, stop. Come on, really, one more piece. I'm glad we got the support tonight. We do. Yeah, we had a couple of people jump off, but we saw 59. All right. Well, you know what? They're lost. <laughs> Maybe they just went to the restroom or something. Maybe. Jam like, Ironworks, did anyone else hear the theme from Rocky just start? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brother. Before the honor forge, ooh, I have an ancient Egyptian re recipe for salve. Salve, huh? Okay, yeah, salve. Yep. Simple forging, because my grandfather showed us how to weld chain when I was when I was our kid's age. I now have the honor of keeping his gear tuned in and in use. Thank you for bringing back good memories. Awesome, you're very welcome. Thank you for being part of the live stream. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry if I have not been as interactive in this live stream as I hope to usually be, but there's a lot, if you notice, there's about seven forge welds that's went on this evening, so quite a lot of forge welding. Um, I think you've done pretty good. Yeah, it takes, it takes quite a bit of attention to detail. Um, you know, when you're doing this, uh, and if you want to really up the ante, do it live yeah. for somebody. Forge weld in front of a group of people that are all waiting to take and chuckle when you got a weld that doesn't stick. Mm -hmm. Oh, it really ups the ante. You think you're pressured and stressful when you're all alone in your blacksmith shop all by yourself to get a weld to stick. Do it in front of a bunch of people. 60 to be exact. 60 <laughs> people. Yeah. There you go. Jeff Stanley said, people I show or give things to think I've been forging for years, so I just direct them to your all's channel. <laughs> <laughs> to prove how many years you've been forging, I take it? <laughs> <laughs> this around again. Alright. You with me, Jeff? Yep, I'm with you. Okay. Give the brush for posterity purposes, although it's not needed. So get those ends in there. Angus Wallace says, I got the popcorn right here. Popcorn right there. Nope. Back around, Jess. Okay. Here we go. Frank, stop. So you're doing fine. No apologies needed. Okay, good. Glad there's no apologies needed here. Well, there's always got to be that one. John McCann says, I think there are trolls that just spend their time out there annoying people and just liking videos. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So true. That happens. But, you know what? Out of the... Oh, four to eight thousand comments, Jessica and I get a month on this channel. There's probably maybe 240 negative ones. So that really puts it into perspective that if you're a troll, how much you mean to us. If I could squeeze my fingers together any further to reduce the gap, I would. That's how much you mean to us. Our subscribers that are dedicated to us, that watch us on the regular, that are always giving us comment and good cheer and support and things like that, that's who we do this channel for, not the trolls. So thank you everyone who's a part of this channel, who supports us on the daily basis with your comments and your kind words. So, you don't, well, you can do it. Sorry, the pressure's on. Yeah. Benji says, yeah, I have a hard time when anybody else is out in the 
shop with me. I can only imagine. Well, that's like everybody thinks so that it's real easy to do YouTube. Or, you know, oh, well, it, and I certainly thought it was. I'm like, well, heck, I can film myself. And it's took in the nearly 700 plus videos that we have filmed to this date to get to where I can say with all confidence that I'm good on camera. So that gives you an example. Hopefully that will give you some idea. I did it again. Oh no, you closed it. I closed it Stick again. It. Stick it back in the ashes. That just shows you like it can become a mindless thing. Like you just do it without even paying very close yeah. attention. Well, it's what happens when you're rushing, you know, when you're getting in a rush. It happens, so. But that's why it's steel and not woodwork. We can always open it back up. Uh, Jeff Sandling, he said mm -hmm. he's actually only been doing it for six months. Well, cool, Jeff Sandling. Hey, you want to you wanna turn it down here real sure. quick, baby? You yep. want to show them how I open that up? Yeah. I open the link up. Ready? Okay, so let's say you closed a link like I just did, and it doesn't need to be closed, decisively not. Uh, you want to grab the link, middle of the road, like you see me here, set it on your horn, and give your tongs a tap at the closest part to the horn to open that link back up. Then, you thread your pieces through. Hopefully they'll fit. Hopefully, come on. You know, nope, it doesn't wanna. There we go. Now we're gonna make it. It wants to or not. Then you add on your next set here. Just like so. And now those are together. Now with what heat you got left, you wanna try to close this back to its original position. All right, that's good enough. I think those are together. There's a tap. Good to go. Give them some flux. Sprinkle on the flux. It's a bit more flux than I would normally put on it, but I had a handful of it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, there we are. So now you can see all that flux on there. We're prepared for our next weld. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, or making a pan for a family, yeah. 
Yep. Roy made one once that was about 14 inches in diameter, and you can cook a lot of food on it. All right, so the real trick to this right now is there's a lot of weight hanging to the lop side of the chain. So, you know, it's going to want to take and tilt the link up, so you have to resist that with torque from the wrist. So that becomes a little bit of a problem. Um, but we're pretty much at a welding heat. Just wait for it to kind of finalize here, soak in some of that heat, and become a reducing fire before we take that weld on there. I think we're up to temp. Okay. So we're going to come right here. You might scroll us over a little bit. We need to be kind of in this area, okay? Okay. Hopefully we're in shot. Good. Uh -huh. Okay, we're good to go? Yes, we are. Okay. So we're going to go with one smooth motion and we'll see how it goes. So it did well, but we're going to take one more heat on it like we've done in the past. We're going to keep the tongs cool. All right, what do you think they think about that? All right, right Kind of anticlimactic, huh? <laughs> yeah, a little bit not sparky, but... <laughs> well, I wasn't burning it either, so... Yeah. Yes, Thomas Urso. I did see your Power Hammer video. It looked like he came up with a great mix mm -hmm. in the design. Congratulations on that. Looks like it's a winner. Congratulations, congratulations. Mike G says, now you've got the chain, you just need to forge a chain and a steel ball, a steel ball to your leg, lol. <laughs> Get the shackle made, huh? The shackle, yeah. There you go, folks. You asked for it. You received it. <laughs> a nice looking one so far. Let's see what I got. There you have it. For those that chose to stick around, there you go. Awesome. And that's the make of the chain. So now there's a way you can cheat a hundred foot of chain. You can make each one of these loops excessively long, like six inches long uh -huh. <laughs> really? when they're finished. Yeah. Uh, so you make really long chain lifts. But the secret about chain, go ahead and back it out, please. Okay. Thank you. The secret to chain 
or from what I have understood of good chain, it's usually short, stout links. The smaller and stouter you can make a link, the stronger the chain. And I think that plays out to physics as well, because if you think about a long spance between two points, it can buckle and bow between. The longer you get away from two points, you can bend more in the center. So the shorter the chain, the more rigid that chain is going to be and be able to withstand force. Uh, so, you know, you make a longer and longer and longer chain, uh, you know, chain links, it's going to get, it won't be able to take as much force uh, in the link itself structure. But there you go. There's a length of seven right there. And now I've got to make another length of seven mm -hmm. and put those two together. Mm -hmm. We won't be doing that in this live stream tonight. Mm -hmm. But in roughly two hours, we got seven, seven forge welds, seven links forge welded. Get, well, more than that now. We've got two extra sitting over here um, that could go on. You know, you could put those on and make a section of, uh, uh, I think it's, 12. You can make a section of 12 if you wanted to. Just weld those three up and then weld on one more. Um, but let's measure this real quick. I want to see what the length is so far. Yeah, for seven lengths. So this way you guys get a gauge on how many, how much work it's going to be for more than, uh, well, you know, about 100 foot or so. All right, that's 18 inches, so a foot and a half of chain. So 18 inches divided by 7 is 2.57, so your average length will lengthen that by 2.57 inches. Mm-hmm. So, but easier way of saying it. Okay. Seven lengths using 8-inch length of rod or 200 mils worth of rod to it, 200 mil mm -hmm. worth of rod, will add up to a foot and a half. So I don't know what that is in meters, mm -hmm. but, uh, but essentially that's what it antiquates out to. So a foot and a half of chain. So you only have to have 66 sections more of that. Yep, so I only have to have 66 more of these <laughs> to join together to get my 100 foot chain garland mm -hmm. for around the shop. Also, this is quite heavy. It would be interesting to find out, you know, the weight of this cross section here. Because each one of these lengths were 8 inches long, or 200 mil. So 200 mil times 7 is what you got, or 1400 mil, or whatever that is, right? So whatever 1400 mil is, is in linear length. The eight times seven. Jessica can do the calculations. Uh, <laughs> My brain shot. I don't care. Okay. Point is, it's a length. I'm just giving you guys some measurements. Mm -hmm. So we started with an eight inch length of rod, bent it around, made a link, made a roughly a rough three inch link out of it. Mm -hmm. And I do mean very rough three inch link. It probably came just a hair of fuzz over. Yeah, it's a three and a half inch link to it, or is that 82 and a half mil or 87 mil or something? I, like, I don't know. I don't know. It's something. Anyways, math's beyond me tonight. We're done with that. <laughs> We're done with math. Roy's going to shut up now. So, anyways, hope you all really enjoyed this little live demonstration of making chain. Uh, here in probably another week or so, we will get back to, I don't know if it'll be next week. We've got quite a bit of stuff going on. I've got some orders I've got to plow out the door. Uh, but next week, maybe we'll do some more chain. We might do that, add some links to it. But it'll probably be not until that following live stream, the following live stream the week after, that we get back to our little vice project here. Uh, I'm really excited about showing you guys the barbell and the way it goes through and stuff and forge welding that other end and then the cheek pieces. But we're getting really close on that to where it's going to be pretty much all ornamental work, filing and chasing and decoration because all the elements are about forged on it, which is pretty awesome. So make sure to join us on that one. Uh, 
Any oh, questions? Yes. Uh, Billy Strong said, Roy and Jess, thanks for spending the extra time with us. Hey, you all are very welcome. I'm glad you all came here and watched me forge weld these links together. It means a lot. Jeff Sandling gave us a $30 super chat. Hey, Jeff Sandling. Appreciate you, brother. God bless you. Thank you so much for that. Oh. Mayo Wolf says, I'm glad I got to see the live stream this time. Enjoyed getting to see Jess with her first forge weld. Have a great evening. Yep. Yep. You have a great evening as well. So uh, before everybody jumps off, I'm going to go ahead and let you all know, uh, once again, Monday evening, if you want to take and grow a business, your blacksmithing business, or maybe some other type of business, and you want some business help and direct tips and questions answered, uh, come join us on our new set on Monday evening, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to run till about 9 p.m., just like we did this live stream, to try to fit in as many people as we can. And, uh, yeah, we're really excited. We put a lot of effort into it. I really think you all are going to like it. So. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, another yep. one I wanted to address here. Alan Murdoch, he says, I donated on PayPal. I guess it doesn't show up on here. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is separate. Um, yep. I will have to combine the list for next yep. week. But everybody give Alan Murdoch a hand clap. Uh, Jeff Sandling. Um, I forget. Graham. From Graham Pepper. Uh, there was another... Uh, Was it salient or? Anyways, thank you all so much uh, for everybody. Give everybody a hand clap that has supported the live stream. Tactronmatic, thank you guys so much. Once again, the super chats, they do help for us to produce better quality streams. Uh, I'm going to have to bring in an audio friend of mine, a guy that knows quite a bit about audio, to get this crackling noise that we've been having. Yeah, we spent out. an hour earlier. Trying yeah, we to spent an hour and we couldn't figure it out. So I'm going to have to get a, a technician in here to get, get it figured out for me. Um, and then do a little test this week. So I'll be doing some testing this week and stuff. Trying to get a better stream because I want to add that secondary camera angle at the anvil. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, let's conclude the live stream, okay. shall we? Yeah. Okay, once again, thank you all so much. If there's not anybody else needing a direct question... We'll, we'll call it good. Time. So, thank you all for joining us once again. Jessica and I appreciate you guys so much out there. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure to join us on Monday evening's live stream from 7 to 9 p.m. if you can make it mm -hmm. or watch it on the replay. I think there's going to be a lot of really good, valuable information there for everybody. And we hope to continue to add value. Uh, to you guys out there and try to help you all build your businesses and your hobbies and whatever you may get into. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's going to be pretty much it. Also, if you're interested, the video for this, uh, the video announcement of this mm -hmm. will be coming up right after this yeah. live stream is concluded. Yeah, so. just made it public. Yeah, you just made it public. So Jessica just made it public. So if yeah. you want to jump off the stream and go watch that video, we greatly appreciate it. Brent Leg, thanks for getting that $10 super chat in there. That's hey, awesome. Brent Leg, thank you. Everybody give Brent Leg a hand clap real quick before we go. Thank you all so much. Once again, thank you for the super chats. Thank you for joining us and letting us take up you know, your guys' valuable time this evening. So God bless you all, and we'll catch you next time.